Hey, Eric. Hope you're enjoying this San Diego-like weather we're, we're having today. Um, hey, I was wondering if you could give some some uh, updates on the, on the injured guys, if any of them might have a shot to play. And it it seems seems like Trevin, maybe his things obviously go, going on for a while. If if it might you know if he might be out a long term or even be back for the season. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think there's any doubt that that he'll you know play um this season as long as there's no setbacks he's been gradually working his way back into um the fold uh hopefully uh, he'll be able to go through some practice today um he has gone through some light stuff of late um and then uh Jalen Graham uh will not practice today possibly will practice Friday um you know both guys I would I would say because we didn't practice yesterday and, and uh, we haven't practiced yet. I would, I would say both guys um, nearing a return, whether that's um, Saturday or Tuesday or, or the following Saturday, sometime within the next three games, we would expect to have, um, you know, both of them back. As far as how, how about Keon Menafield? Yeah. Keon's day to day. I mean, okay. he's, he'll go. He'll go through whatever he can in practice. I know you obviously don't like having guys hurt, but one byproduct is it's kind of forced you to keep a pretty tight rotation, which I know you do like doing that. And it's worked out pretty well here of late. Just what have you thought about the rotation? And then how do you work? If the injured guys are ready, how do you work them back in? How how does that work? Yeah, I mean, I I mean, you know, you gotta wait till see who's available and who's not available. And um you know, the way that we played the last two games, I mean, those guys are going to deserve to, um, you know, to, to continue to stay in, in, in somewhat of a role, but obviously, you know, if, if injured guys um, come back, you want to get them back in the fold as well. So, uh, but it has been, um, you know, guys kind of know when they're coming in and out of games and, and uh, it's been a little bit easier uh, probably from a coaching standpoint, as well as a, um, you know, player perspective uh, with a shorter rotation, which is why we've done it that way for nine years. And, um, you know, it wasn't done earlier because, you know, con lack of consistency, you know, and, and that's been that's been the one thing with our team that we, you know, we're continuing to try to be as consistent as we possibly can. Well, why do you think it's been working so well? Because some of these guys like KB didn't play for a while. Ellis has been out of games and, uh, Dan fortunately playing well, but he he hadn't played. Well, why do you think this particular group seems to be working so well? Well, I think like with Battle, I think he's uh, our defensive concepts. Uh, he's been much better of late, um, you know. And so it's it's uh, you know when you're when you're not um, playing as well as you hope, you know you got two things to do: either you stick to what you're doing, um, or you uh, try to continue to search and and uh and see what you know what can work and obviously you know the you guys aren't privy to practices and and um some of the statistical analysis we have an outside company that does stuff so it's a whole bunch of stuff that goes that factors into it and and uh of late the group that that's been out there has done a good job for us okay i might have a couple more if time allows but i'll give it back to mike thanks eric thanks bob Hutch. Hey, Eric, I know Missouri's still looking for their first win, but they played really well the last two games at Ole Miss and then Tennessee, they gave them a scare. Just what have, what have you noticed from them on film that they're they're doing well these last couple of games? Well, obviously they got, uh, you know, experience uh, coming back. You know, Sean East didn't play for a couple of games. He's back and he changes things for them. So uh, their record is not indicative of who they are based on an injury to – uh, a really talented player in Sean East. And um, look, you know, honor uh, number 10 and uh, number 55 East, number 35, Noah Carter. I mean, those three guys have been starters in this league. So that's a really good nucleus. And then you add in the fact a freshman from last year, who's now a sophomore, uh, Aiden Shaw's got experience, obviously Connor Vanover's got experience. And then, um, you know, a guy that is as good as any newcomer in the league is Bates from Indiana. Um, so that was a great uh, pickup for them out of the portal. Not a good one, but a great one. 
And uh, so you look at Bates, Honor, Carter, uh, East, and that's a that's a that's a talented team. And so uh, we've got to bring our A game. We've got to have good transition defense. We've got to do a good job taking care of the basketball. Um, we've got to understand, you know, East and and Bates are primary scorers for them, and and uh, we've got to try to do a good job on them. And something you mentioned after the Texas A and M win about how you knew going in that keeping them off the offensive boards was going to be tough and you kind of practiced on what to do when they got them. I, it made me think back to your first team that y'all had problems rebounding the ball because of size. Was, is there any, were you able to look back at your first team and do anything similar to in that leading up to that preparation or is it it's just a completely different situation? I, I mean, I think it's completely different actually. Yeah. You know, I think we've, with the lack of um, size that we've had, because Devo has been playing some power forward for us. Um I actually think we've done a good, really good job. I've been happy. Um, you know, you never want to give up double digit offensive rebounds, but uh, we have worked on trying to go vertical as a second jumper. If a team gets an offensive rebound and we've done a, uh, I would say we've done a very good job of, of not allowing offensive rebounds uh, to, to really, really kill us. Um, and so, um, you know, and, and we've, slightly rebounded a little better for for us offensively mainly you know Davenport's energy on the offensive glass Bob uh yeah Eric you you, you mentioned Van or he's obviously a guy that played here uh I thought he did okay in, in limited minutes the first time y'all played him well, what have you seen from Connor this year and I guess what's it like playing a guy that uh, used to be here I mean, you, you know, you always root for, for former players and, and Connor, um, you know, such a, a great young man and, and his family's awesome. And so you, you want him to play well and have great success, you know, not necessarily, you know, when we play him. So right. two nights, you know, out of the season because Missouri's a two-time um, opponent. Um, but, you know, Connor's a, a great shooter with deep range and, and certainly a lob threat. Uh, and a great passer. So, you know, you want to try to take away his three ball looks. You want to try to pressure the pass because he is such a high basketball IQ player and he's got really good vision for somebody his size. You know, you, you guys obviously panel Missouri pretty, pretty well there in Columbia. I mean, this final score, I don't think it was really an indication of how dominant y'all were. Now you're playing them here. So I think there's a tendency for people to think, well, if you beat a team on the road, you're certainly going to beat them at home. It obviously doesn't always work that way. It hadn't worked that way this year in, in some SEC matchups. Kind of, how do you approach a game and make sure your guys don't think, well, we already beat them at their place, so we're obviously going to beat them at our place? Yeah, I mean, I hope that we understand by this stage how hard it is to win a game in the league. Um, it's uh, It's a super competitive league, and, uh, you look at all the close games that Missouri's played throughout the entire course of the season, and um, we've got to play a great game to beat them. Um, and so, you know, it's an early start. Got to wake up. Got to get your body movement. Got to get your competitive spirit in high gear uh, from the beginning of the game, which we did at their place. Um, but, yeah, I mean, this is, you know, beginning of the year when we looked at Missouri's roster and, um, and looked at those returning guys like we have great respect for those guys that we played last year um, and this year. So and then and then, like I've mentioned, Bates has become, just become such a, a vital pickup for them in the in the portal and and done a great job scoring the ball in the half court and doing a great job scoring the ball in transition. And I, I know you don't want to give give away any secrets, but you did a really great job the second time around Taylor after he'd had a big game against you. Do you have some. I don't know, some special stuff for Bates or do you just try to do better what you tried last time or kind of without giving away secrets, kind of what, what's your approach there? Yeah. I mean, I think you always want to take the film and, and try to evaluate, you know, um, you know, how you can try to uh, contain a, a, a star offensive player on the other team. And certainly we'll come up with some, you know, some simple rules that um, maybe that we didn't utilize in, in game one and, and, um, you know, he's, he's a hard player to cover because he goes to the offensive glass. He really gets downhill in transition. He can make a three um, and he can hard dribble drive with either hand. So, um, but yeah, I mean, we, we start our prep today and, and try to get ready for, um, you know, Bates as, as well as not, not letting honor get three balls up and, and then defending, 
you know, East who can, who can go East and West off the bounce and, and can shoot threes off the bounce. And, and then Carter, we, you know, we gave up a couple threes. We have to do a better job of closing the airspace against number 35, Noah Carter. And I know we talked about Mackay some the other night, but I wanted to ask you something else. I, I know that the TV announcers seemed surprised when he didn't start the second half the other night. And I remember thinking, well, you know, he's playing off the bench. You want to keep him out of foul trouble. But I've had some people say, why didn't he start him? And I said, well, he plays 33 minutes. Who cares? And, and the other night he, at State, he fouled out in 23 minutes. So um, I, I guess, but since people have been asking me, I said, well, hell, I'll ask Eric. Well, what, what, why have you, because he started last year. What, why do you feel like you, you want to bring him off the bench right now? Well, I think he's settled into being super, super comfortable off the bench. I think every player probably wants to start, whether they're playing CYO, uh, AAU, high school, college, pros, FIBA. Um, but right now, there's a great comfort zone on when he's coming into the game and and the way he's produced. Um, you know, I, I don't I don't know why anybody would uh, want to start him because he is. I mean, he's playing the whole game minus seven minutes and and you know um he's a, effective the way that we, that he's been used of late but you know if it wasn't him somebody would ask me why am i not starting this guy why not playing and then you end up playing 11 guys in one half like i have too much and everybody say why are you playing 11 guys in a half yeah and, you yeah. know when we were making elite eights and playing yeah. seven guys it was why didn't we play 12 guys the rotation was too short yeah and uh, man, his free throws, he just looks like he's Larry Bird or something up there. He's just dropping them in like, I mean, I think he's a, he's improved quite a bit since last year. I mean, having a big man who's going to draw fouls, being such an elite free throw shooter, how how good is that? How much of a luxury is that? And why do you think he seems, I think he's improved by about 15% or something over last year. Is there a, is that just work and practice or what, what do you attribute that to? Yeah, I mean, he, he, uh, he does does work on his free throws uh, before practice, uh, after practice. He does a really good job of that. I mentioned when he had his, when he was out this summer with the injury that he was, uh, one thing that he was able to do was shoot fouls. He's got really good backspin on his shot, uh, good rotation, good arch. And, and right now he's a confident player from the foul line. And you did mention, Bob, one of the big keys is that he's drawing a lot of fouls, uh, which is important in our system. And he's a great passer too. So, um, he puts pressure on the defense on how they're going to play our pick and roll coverage because we do like to to put, um, you know, Mitchell in a, in a ton of pick and rolls, both on the wings and in the middle of the floor. Hey, th thanks, Eric. Touch. Yeah, I just have one more. You mentioned Davenport and his offensive rebounding just a second ago. You know, he also had a couple of steals and, and he had nine points, but his three ball isn't falling. Just how important is it that he's still able to find ways to – to contribute and help y'all even when the, the three isn't falling. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, the, 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 the makeup of our roster, you know, we don't have um, size wise uh, kind of that swing guy that we've, you know, that we've had a whole <laughs> slew of them from, from Moody to, to Stanley to, you know, guys that are six, seven, six, eight. And so, you know, JD's kind of the closest thing. Um, that we have, and he's done a really good job of playing both the small forward and the power forward for us. Um, he plays with some energy, some juice, um, you know, and, and although it hasn't been the shooting season that he probably hoped or that we had hoped, he's certainly providing a lot of stuff for us on a nightly basis that maybe doesn't show up on the stat sheet. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate your time. Thanks, Bob.